Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about 10 ways to naturally improve fertility through your mind and body. My husband and I are currently doing a three month fertility challenge. Uh, we've been facing infertility for over six years. And through that time, you know, your mind can totally play tricks on you and you think you're pregnant and you're not and uh, you are just like, forget it, we're gonna give up now. And there's, there's so many ups and downs in your mind. Your mind, um, you know, really is a powerful vessel. And so I just wanna share some ways that I have discovered um, through lots of research the last like year and a half when I kind of started to look at natural ways for fertility. And there are so many helpful resources. I'm gonna hope this is one for you. So in Proverbs 16, three, it says, commit your ways to the Lord and then your thoughts will be established. So is this saying that if you do all the 10 things, you know, perfectly, that you're definitely going to get pregnant? No, but I do know that these things have helped other women get pregnant. Um, and I, I was not really wanting to make this video because I don't know, I've been really struggling with this part um, of the fertility challenge. I've re already talked about diet and supplements and I started those and then about two weeks later started adding in some mind and body uh, elements just because I wanted to really focus on getting the diet down first because um, that was taking me like three to four hours a day of prep and planning. Um, and now that I've got it down, it takes about two hours to do those things and because I know what groceries to get and I know um, easily easy meals I can put together and so I don't have to spend as much time focusing on that. And so now, can share mind and body. Okay, so the first thing that has really helped me the most is guided visual meditation. And there's one called Circle and Bloom. And Circle and Bloom has several programs. And the one that I'm currently doing is Natural Cycle for Fertility. And I just really like these guided meditations because they go through each day of your cycle and like what your body is doing. And it's just amazing to know what your body is doing and it helps you to relax. And yeah, I fall asleep to that almost every night. <laughs> Number two, dream journaling. This is a time that I thank God and I journal um, each day when I wake up just to have a heart of gratitude and to set my intention for the day. Number three, acupuncture. Uh, now I was a little hesitant to do acupuncture and I will actually have a whole video um, coming out with that and the benefits of that for fertility. And number four, exercise and it's gonna be able to get vitamin D. And so we've been taking some daily walks. Um, we try to take one a, a day, sometimes two. Um, before COVID-19, we were uh, going to the gym in the afternoon together, and then I was doing a walk in the morning by myself. Um, but with COVID, we've been doing walks together, so that's been pretty nice. Can't wait to get back to the gym, do lighter exercises. Um, if you already are like running marathons and stuff, then like, you probably don't have to go too light, but you don't want to like ramp it up. If you've never, you know, run a mile, don't try to like go and run like five. So um, focusing on that has been really good. So another form of exercise is yoga. So there are currently two fertility yoga DVDs that I really like, and those are Restoring Fertility. So this one's really nice because it goes through all four phases of your, of your cycle. And so it specializes on what you need at that moment. Um, I probably do this one, I try to do it each morning uh, because you wanna do yoga on an empty stomach. I do it probably ends up being like four or five times per week for this one. And then this one, acupressure for fertility. Um, I had never really done acupressure or acupuncture before starting this fertility challenge, but I have to say like it is really nice. It's just a way to get your blood circulating to the right places. And so this is really amazing. And uh, I probably do this one once or twice a week. I do this in like the evenings between lunch and dinner. I like this one a lot. Now, I will say that there are some acupuncture points that you should not do if you are pregnant. And so a lot of these I do in the earlier part of my cycle before ovulation, um, just in case there 
is a little baby hoppy in here. Uh, I don't want to do anything to hurt the blood flow um, to the embryo. So I'm just going to show you quick, well, real fast, just a few acupressure points that you can even start right now. Um, this one is one that shouldn't be done um, after ovulation if you think you might be pregnant. Um, but right here on your thumb, um, this one's called return to nest. And you just like take your finger and you just do it in a circular motion um, on each of the thumbs. And so that is really nice, that point right there. And then on the point on your ring finger, um, on the middle, middle part, this one, this is a specialty point for women. Kind of just massage that point. So right here. And another one is really good for reducing stress in your body. And it also has been shown to decrease um, nausea. So this is, might be a good one after you do become pregnant, if you end up having morning sickness. Um, and it's just in the middle of your wrist here. You just take your thumb and um, do that, kind of rotate that there. And my other, okay, now I'm going crazy. Here's another one that I really like. Um, right here, uh, this is, I believe, called Stomach 36. And so like stomach 36, basically they're all like meridians in your body. And this is based on traditional Chinese medicine, which I have found really fascinating. Uh, anyway, so right here is a point called stomach 36. And you just go ahead and massage that. And for me, like it feels so good. And if you are a runner, this point has actually been shown to uh, help with endurance and help your legs to keep moving. So um, yeah, she said like, this is what the couriers in China would used to do when they had to run that extra mile is just massage that point. So you massage for like, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds on each point. So that's pretty, pretty cool just to know how your body works. I just am finding it really fascinating. Number five, fertility affirmations. Now this is something that I need to get better about doing every day. Um, I sometimes just do it when I am kind of just feeling a little bit down and need some extra encouragement. I really need to write these around the house, but I'm going to share a couple with you, um, general ones and then ones for specific parts of your cycle. My body knows just what to do for conception. I am getting closer to baby every day. I am happy, healthy, and fertile. And for your menstruation phase, I am grateful for my period as it means that I am fertile. That's a hard one to be thankful for, but that's not what I've been switching my mindset to. And I tell you what, it makes a huge difference when you get your period and you're like, wow, thank you God that I am still fertile. I nourished myself to prepare for this perfect cycle. And during the follicular phase, my eggs are plentiful and healthy. My ovaries work perfectly. My follicles are abundant and easily grow. Now this one is something that I need to believe, especially with my low ovarian reserve and how my follicle count is low. So that one I really like and resonates with me. Again, I'll say it, my follicles are abundant and easily grow. For ovulation phase, I ovulate at the perfect time in my cycle. Life is beginning inside of me. And during the luteal phase, my fallopian tubes are easily passable and operating perfectly. My uterus is lush and warm, providing the nourishment for my perfect embryo. I mean, now I got these off of tomakeamommy.com. I know I've mentioned her blog before, but she has a lot of other ones on there as well. And so if those ones didn't resonate with you, you can go and see which ones do, but it's helpful to be constantly saying positive phrases um, because we know that it is so important on, on what we meditate on. Number six, time with God. Uh, in the morning, my husband and I do a uh, daily devotional together and then I do a devotion on my own. Um, the one I'm currently going through is called Grace and Gratitude and I really like how it just helps me to focus on being thankful. And then in mid-morning when I'm drinking my fertility smoothie, I look at verses that really encourage me about fertility. And so these are um, things I've written up and it's just, it's really nice to look at these and um, be encouraged. And Peter and I also pray together and separately. 
uh, about baby Hoppy. Number seven, castor oil packs. Now, I've never heard of this before, starting this fertility challenge, um, but I'm just gonna show you real fast how to make a castor oil pack. Um, so you're gonna use some plastic wrap, so that way the oil hopefully doesn't end up on your bed sheets, which it has for ours already, and they're stained, but oh well. Um, you want some kind of soaked like flannel, they said, but I didn't have like used flannel that I wanted to just like discard, so I just had these large um, gauze pads, and I do um, two of these, and then I drizzle this over here. Castor oil is known to like drawn out like impurities and things like that. Right after menstruation, until ovulation, you're gonna put this castor oil pack on your uterus, and then over that, you're gonna put a warming pad. Um, this is just one I got on Amazon. You warm up for 90 seconds, and then you put it over um, the castor oil pack. Now, if it is after ovulation, then you're gonna go ahead and put it on your liver, which is on your right side, and that way um, it can just help you know that functioning so then all the energy can go um, to your reproductive organs. So I've done this and I'm, I think you're only supposed to do it for like 30, 45 minutes. Um, I sometimes fall asleep with it on me. I don't know if that's good, but it, it has been nice. I did notice that when I was doing it my liver, I was starting to have um, even better bowel movements. I don't know if that's a correlation to that or if it was also right around that same time I was doing the seed um, probiotic, which I talked about in the supplement video. And so I think that also helped. Um, I think that probably helped more, but this did not hurt. So there you go. Castor oil pack, woo! -hoo! Number eight, Mayan belly massage. Um, and now this is something that I haven't really done too much. Um, I did a little bit last cycle. Um, I just have kept forgetting to do it. Uh, this is something that you do um, right after menstruation um, and until ovulation. And it's all about um, getting the blood circulating in your reproductive organs. Um, so you can look up like how to's on Mayan belly massages. Massages, massages. <laughs> you can look up how to's on my belly massage. Number nine, visualization. I know this kind of goes with number one about the guided visual meditation and with circle and bloom, but this one is just, you know, throughout the day visualizing yourself um, pregnant. And so for me, um, I sometimes do that when I'm in the shower uh, or even when I'm cooking and just putting my hand on my stomach and just visualizing um, that I have a nice big round belly with a healthy pregnancy. And number 10, educate. For me, when I am learning all of these things and how my body works, then I'm just able to visualize it so much better and know that the foods that I'm eating are going to go to the right places and they're going to nourish my body. And so that is just, it's been so great for me. I know I've shared these resources before, but um, It All Starts With The Egg is a great book. Um, and also uh, The Infertility Cure, um, and just tons and tons of podcasts, Instagrammers. And this past week was actually National Infertility Awareness Week. And they actually did a, a Beat Infertility Summit, where they gathered over 60 speakers speaking on different fertility topics, different fertility diagnosis, 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 I'm not sure how to say it. And they did um, videos and you can actually watch those videos for free for the next six months. Um, so you're just gonna go to Be Infertility Summit. It's absolutely free. And I was just so encouraged um, by some of these. But just educating yourself really I think helps that mind-body connection as well. So I hope you enjoyed those 10 ways to help improve your fertility naturally. And it is hard for sure. It's been a struggle of, yes, God, I believe. Please help my unbelief. And so again, we don't know what the results will be for us, but I hope that these um, can help encourage you to really just take your fertility in control. You know, if it gets too hard or too overwhelming, like that happens too. And that is why, you know, I don't do these all every single day because 
it can get too overwhelming and you don't want to get stressed. That's not the point of this. And so you want to do it at your pace. And there are some days when I'm able to do everything perfectly. And so just know what is good for you and your mental health. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. And we don't know what's coming next. Stop looking at the yard. Uh, I pick every single dandelion, huh? Never ending. It actually goes through all four um, of your reproductive like parts. No, not parts. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> phases, phases. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> oh my goodness, if any of my neighbors just heard me say these fertile affirmations, they probably think that they have the weirdest neighbors now ever. <laughs> I feel hope being born in